President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has appointed additional minister nominees in a list forwarded to the Senate for screening and confirmation. Senate President Goswila Kwabi announced the names of the second batch of presidential ministerial um, nominees during the ministerial screening on Wednesday. The list of completion, uh, the list is a completion of the remaining 11 states that have not been allotted ministerial slot. Some names on the list include Ahmed Tijani, Boston Tijani, uh, Dr. Miriam Shetty, Ishak Salako, and Tunji Alausa, amongst others. Well, joining us to discuss uh, the list of ministers is Kunle Lawo, he's the Executive Director, Electoral College Nigeria, and we're also being joined by Sonny Maduka, who is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Uh, let me start with you, um, Kunle, because you obviously um, are of the Electoral College. And so if we're talking all things politics, especially um, the Tinubu administration, um, you'd be best to start with. Um, looking at the first set of people in the list and now, of course, uh, 11 more people who've been added, which makes it more than 36. Of course, we know that in line with the Constitution, you must have at least um, some show of federal character to make sure that every state is represented. But in this case, this is the highest number of nominees for ministerial appointments um, ever in history. It looks like the president is going for, um, you know, to break some, some sort of record. But let's start by um, assessing the number of people who are, have been nominated. What exactly are your thoughts on this? Um, first and foremost, I believe that there was a breach of, of the constitution and even with the submission of this list names. The fact that the president was supposed to do it in 60 days and he broke the list into bits. And uh, this was a situation where you don't easily find um, normal people because he's bridged that. But now let's move on to the situation entirely. If you're going to understand the direction of the president, and this is what I personally believe, if you're going to understand the direction of the president, his ministerial list is going to tell you whether he's going for development or he's trying to secure a second term or he's politically trying to provide gratitude to some that stood by him during the election. And what we've seen clearly from this entire 47 man list is, um, um, I think, political settlements. Now, usually in politics, what you have in, with, from people Yes, people normally bring out, you know, like the Buhari administration, the good luck administration. What you see is about 30, 40 percent of political settlements and then about 60 percent or sometimes 55 percent of, of technocrats participating. Um, President Ahmed Bola Tinubu went and pulled the political juka and just brought in the usual suspects, if I can use that term. Thank you. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Mr. Madoka, let me come to you. Uh, every time we speak to, you know, the handlers of Mr. President, they always make reference to the fact that he had been governor of Lagos State. And in his being governor of Lagos State, he worked with the best hands. Um, they've always touted him as one who would be going for, you know, technocrats and guys who would be, you know, able to change the course of things for Nigeria. Um but as, as you look at this list of nominees, I mean, even though portfolios have not been attached to them yet, can we really say that the Tinubu that run Lagos State um, has been able to bring that self of his to the presidency? Well, thank you, Anne. I think uh, Kule said something about uh, political settlement. That's exactly what you can you know, call the assemblage or the gathering of the same old fellows. I didn't see any change from Buhari era. It's a gathering of the same people, you know, uh, you know, who had you know held us uh, captive in the past. I was thinking that uh, uh, the administration will take a new, uh, you know, a new system or a new way of uh, administration. But with the gathering of people, I, I didn't see any change. Look at it from this angle. Seven is uh, state governors. Uh, two of them just uh, recently. All of them lost in their states, and you're bringing them to four. On what basis? What What did they do? What value did they add to their state that their state didn't honor them? You know, by voting them. 
you know, you look at the person like, uh, uh, you know, Matt Talley, who EFCC, you know, saw almost 40 exotic cars in his house, and it was returned with apology. You look at, in fact, if you look at the entire uh, package, you discover that almost 50% of them have one thing or the other, you know, with uh, law enforcement agents in terms of corruption. So I didn't see anything uh, that's going to happen in this regime. More so, we are talking about cutting the cost of governance. 47 ministers, for Christ's sake, at this time, we are thinking that he will be shut down certain ministries, you know, collapse ministries into one, so that we have less of these ministers. But now 47, which is even outside the Federal Character Commission Charter, because uh, the Federal Character Commission Charter that every state should produce one minister. Now, if you look at that list, some states have three, some states two. So in what basis, what is the criteria? Like uh, my colleague said, it's outside the purview, it's outside the constitution of this country. What, what makes the other state to have three nominees and the other was one? In what aspect? And uh, in fact, the whole thing as I'm seeing it is, is abnormal. Uh, you look at people like El Rufa, uh, you know, the state all through eight years he was in uh, governor of uh, uh, Kaduna State. We have turmoil, security challenges. You have even somebody like Bahudu who have been fingered out during their bachelor era as part of the people who uh, helped in, you know, sh you know, kind of uh, hiding some form of a bachelor. So when you look at the list, it's a, it's a few people that they were just brought in, which uh, most of them are you know, novice, because I don't see most of them that are going to do anything. I saw the the, the, the screening committee or the screening, screen. you will discover that some of them don't even know what to say. Uh, some of them were just making, you know, uh, what you look like a child's play. And of course, the Senate didn't help matter because they were making jest of certain things. People that are supposed to ask questions, there wasn't any question. They say, come and bow and go. No, uh, screening of ministers should be very, you know, very, very thorough. We should know who and who that is coming to be a minister of the Federal Republic, not just uh, making it look as if it's a, a, a caricature. Like, for instance, I expected the Senate to ask the first, the person that said that he's three years before he entered primary school, how come? I expected the the student equally to ask somebody who entered university with two uh, credits. They should not even bow. They should be told to go home. It's not a, it's a, you see, the word they look caricatured, kind of, because this was, they said they should bow down. And then what next? It's a public glare. People should be able to know that punishment is meted to people who didn't even meet the criteria, not to talk about the jest in that chamber. So that's what I have to say now. For me, uh, it's a no no. Okay. Kula, let me come back to you. Um, many people raised an eyebrow when um, Governor Kwabio seemed to jump in, in front of the petition issue against uh, the governor of Paduna State, El Rufai. Uh, we saw that um, he, he personalized the issue somewhat, and many people um, queried his action towards it. Um, Mr. Madagar raised an issue saying that it looks like they were making fun of the whole situation. Um, what do we expect from the Senate, um, you know, when we're talking about sensitive issues like, you know, questionable things like results, um, petitions, um, law enforcement agencies having cases that are still, you know, hanging over the heads of some of these people? Um, should we be expecting much from the Senate, especially with um, Igosu Lakwabio as the Senate president? Um, I, I, I've always come from the belief that um, you cannot turn an executive into a legislative. It's only done in Nigeria. Because somebody was a governor, it gives him automatic rights to become a legislative officer. Those are two entirely different ball games. And, and you know, in the end, the electorate suffers because they don't understand the difference between the executive and the legislative. To move on to the 10th Senate, I would say... From the first actions of the Ted Senate, nobody needs to tell me it's probably going to be the most lackluster um, group that we've had in history. And I'll point out a few things. 
I do not understand a ministerial screening without portfolios. What are you screening? So people are just telling you, they're just talking off the top of their head and we don't know what exactly. It's like you're in a private company and I'm trying to hire you. But I guess what you've told the HR officer that you don't know what position you would like to grant to them. So you're just hiring. So they should think up anything they want to say. So it's baseless. And this is a country that, like you said, we're, we're at the point where we need people who are making decisive decisions who would help bring in the right policies to help these are the members of our Fed Council. Like you said, it's been a joke. As regards the results issues that we saw and the petition, I would say uh, Akrabio is a little right. You can't, at the Senate screening, bring in a petition against a, a, a governor, but the Senate has purview on both. But what should have been asked at that point by whoever asked the question instead of discussing the petition is in case you were made Minister of Defense, Malam El Rufai, are you trying to tell us you're going to guarantee the kind of security you guaranteed in Cardinal State? Those are pertinent questions. The, the, the petition is a separate thing, which is code of conduct and etc. But now handling this, uh, being a ministerial screening, he should have been asked the right question. And, and I feel if it were on matters of security, and if it was being security, the uh, Malam El Rufai was being... Um, was being um, uh, screened for. I, I think when that question was asked, we all know that you probably be worse than the guy with two credits. Uh, the truth is, the the tenth Senate um, is full of a lot of novices. I would say the most multi-party Senate, but I don't see anything legislative about the tenth Senate, and it's a lot of of things that have happened even preceding the ministerial nominees. But we look on to, to wish for better things for the country. Uh, let me just push you a bit farther before I go back to Ms. Madhika. Uh, when you say we look forward to, I mean, because you know there is a saying where I come from, that you know the how good the marriage will be from the bachelor's eve. If this is, from what is playing out already on the floor of the Senate or the National Assembly in general, what, are, what should we hope for? Don't forget, yesterday they made a promise to um, the the guys who were protesting the labor, um, making some promises and saying they'll get back to them in a few days. Should anybody hold out hope? Looking at all the things that are already happening. Plus, I'd like to remind us that bulletproof vehicles are about to be received by all of these gentlemen in the midst of a crisis, an economic crisis that we're facing. Should we be holding out hope? Number one, uh, the 10th Senate has just cost us 70 billion naira to settle down. That's minus X, which they've received within the system, which includes their cars, et cetera, and et cetera. I never thought I would live in this country and ever hear the fact that a bill will be tagged, let the poor people be. For me, that I, I don't, I can, I can almost say Chuba Okadibo and the great uh, Senate presidents we've had of past will be turning in their graves as what well the desecration of, of the legislative office presently done by the 10th Senate. Um, the work of the Senate is to make laws. Um, whatever they are saying to NLC, whatever decision they are making with NLCs, we should make the adequate laws that are, that, that, that will, uh, of course, ensure workers' uh, stability during a time like this economically. Um, the, the, the legislative should stop acting in executive capacity. They are not the, the, the executive. And I don't know who needs to tell uh, the Senate president that he's only there to kind of manage proceedings, not to dictate to his fellow uh, senators what should be done and what should be done. Mm, interesting. Uh, Ms. Vatica, let me come back to you. In um, our Democracy Day speech, I remember... Mr. President made some very interesting promises. In fact, he um, promised to hold off, uh, hold, uphold the tenets of democracy, and I'm not quoting it directly. Uh, um, you know, he also made mention of the fact that he would um, also uphold the legacy of the, of the late MKW bill and making sure that Nigeria is saved from, you know, the past mistakes that we've made. Um, looking at all the things that Mr. President has done up until today, um, it took him how many days to be able to bring up a list of these ministerial nominees? And many have, have wondered why this list couldn't have been ready from day one. 
Um, does it show, looking at Mr. President's body language, um, does it show that um, there is there was some level of preparedness for this administration? Do we have hope that, um, you know, knowing that there's um, the, the slogan for his campaign was renewed hope, do we have hope that um, this ship is being steered in the right direction? And how so? Well, uh, let's keep hope alive. Hope is the only thing that can keep us, uh, you know, hopeful for a better tomorrow. But I don't think uh, there's any uh, iota of uh, preparedness, uh, preparedness by uh, tenable administration, no. I was expecting uh, within the framework, of within the time that he was pronounced or declared president, he traveled overseas, spent over two months. I was thinking that he's using that period to articulate his policies. But fortunately, he came back, and we we're all talking about 60 days before he can even send out his uh, ministerial nominates. Uh, on the other aspect of democracy, I have not seen anything democratic, you know, in this uh, present government. He unilaterally removed the fuel subsidy, you know, which is not democratic. A president should be able to listen to other people, he should be able to throw it to the public. You, everything he has been doing is like uh, we are still in military. Uh, the, the loan, the removal of the subsidy, every of his pronouncements has nothing as democratic in it. Uh, he has already put us in a frustrated mood. And unfortunately, his speech, which I expected to carry much weight than economic issues, uh, didn't carry much weight. In terms of one, uh, looking into the root cause of why Nigeria is buoyant but poor. Why is an NPC uh, not doing anything? Why? What is it in an NPC that has at now should not be part of those that have been probed are just uh, probing a CBA now? Uh, what is it that uh, we cannot talk about the refineries? He didn't talk about those things. What is it that we cannot talk about those quirks? He, he said, you know, that we are really the economic vultures of this country. What is he going to do about it? Is he going to let them go? Are we still in the same euphoria of, oh, uh, it's a past? No. There must be issues about, you know, uh, correct, you know correcting the past. But as of now, with what we are seeing, even with the nominate, uh, nominees that we are just seeing, we discover that there's nothing changed. Maybe from what he said when he was campaigning, that he's starting from where uh, the former president stops. It's already a governance. Because I didn't see anything new as per whatever you're talking about, giving the populace a uh, right to discuss and talk about their own problems. People are talking about, look, this fuel crisis, nobody is talking about, don't, don't remove it. But the way and manner it was removed was dictatorial. He cannot say it's democrat. No, it is not. Because as at that time, we're talking about 200, between two, uh, 185 and 200. And people are managing it. What we will have done is wait, get your cabinet, get your economic team. Then you will now strategize. I don't think there's anything. And of course, the way he said it was more of impunity. If you want to go and protest, you can go and protest. He's talking to Nigerians. These are Nigerians that voted him. He shouldn't make caricature of us. We are not jokes. Mm -hmm. Citizens that are here are not jokes. Nigeria should have respect even from their leaders. But as, as far as I'm concerned, what uh, uh, President Tilibu is doing right now is like, you can go to hell. Because from trajectory that we just discussed here, from the nominees, he extended nominees to 47, which had never happened in, in, in Nigeria. What are, you, what are we looking at for 47 at a time when we are having economic crunches and Nigerians are going through hell? Okay. Let me bring you in here. Um, the IPAC chairman, uh, Interparty um, IPAC chairman, talked about this issue. He chimed in on the issue of nominations of ministers. And I'd like to quote him directly what he said. Um, he said, I'm dis disappointed, awfully uh, disappointed. Some of the people that he put as ministers were rejected by their own people. Some of them contested and they were rejected. So how can you bring them through the back door again? and say they must preside over the affairs of the people. That's not the kind of country 
that we uh, want to run. And this is Yag uh, Yabagi Sani, who is, of course, the IPAC national chairman. Um, again, the likes of Governor El Rufai, the likes of, um, um, I think, Matawali and the, and, and the rest of them, of course, do have questionable character. But let's go back to the estates. Did they really, in any way, um, work hard to change, you know, things in their states. Maybe maybe they have unfinished business and maybe the president is saying bring it to bear at the federal level. Again, the job of a minister is more like the job of a commissioner. Um, he'd obviously be working with permanent secretaries and directors. Um, can we not hope for the best from these people? Again, owing to what the IPAC chairman has said. Well, if, if, you, if you look at the list, I, I don't know how you can use the word hope and that list. The truth is, um, like um, Ogasani mentioned, Sonny, sorry, mentioned earlier, there are a lot of people with corruption cases. So I, if anybody was going to tag this list... Bakun, 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 there were cases against former ministers under the Buhari administration. We had the, the a case... Um, the case of um, the former Minister of Transportation, um, well, Governor Amici. Um, we also had um, several other people who had cases that were looming, and it didn't stop anything, did it? No, it didn't. But because we have created a culture in which these things happen, it does not mean that is the norm. If we stop speaking against it, it now sounds like that is supposed to be the norm. And the truth is that it's not. It's hard to hope with, you know, having people like uh, uh, Governor Omahi of Ebony. I don't know where he's going to serve. I just found out he was an engineer. And we clearly remember this is someone who, when he joined the APC, he said on national TV he had not read the constitution of the party. So has he even read the constitution of Nigeria to understand the functionality of the jurisdiction of the office is going to serve him? That's a very big question to ask. And mm -hmm. it, it, it goes, it goes across the whole spectrum. And everybody from um, Henneken, who served uh, as a minister earlier and couldn't do, do anything much, and is being returned. Um, um, uh, you mentioned Mutawali. Let's not discuss him again. Uh, there's this woman who was there. Um, I keep forgetting. The APC woman brought in who is on this list. Hello. Um, you said Talent? No, not talent. Um, there's an you called her name out. Remember it. And she's a northern mm -hmm. woman brought on this list. Okay. And you know, everybody has questioned what reason she was brought on the list for. Now we need to remember that when we're picking ministers in Nigeria, the, it, it is not ministers of the APC. It is ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There's no seat. You, yes, APC. Are, Tilcott decide won the election according to INEC. Tilcott decide, but APC does not sit on the on the on the on the chair of the president of the Federal Republic. A person is sworn to the Constitution of the Federal Republic, and if you are sworn to the Constitution, it means that you must pick the best Nigerians to manage this thing. I I I, I can't wait to see when the portfolios go a particular way. Because, like I said earlier, using the word hope and this um, set of Alibaba and the 40 feet, it's kind of shocking. I don't know how to put it together, but you use the word hope, renewed. It's been used a lot. Um, I don't think I see it being honest. Thank you. Quick, quickly, Kune, before I let you go and, and, and then go back to Mr. Madika, you put out a tweet and I want to read it and then you'll explain to us what you meant by it. Uh, you said the ministerial list is one of the drawings into the image of the Nigeria of Nigeria the president wants to depict. It prioritizes one of these two things, development or the plot to second term. Um, are you insinuating in any way that these people that the presidency has um, assembled to be part of his renewed hope uh, government um, might be just another way to Yeah. 
Yes, I clearly, I clearly, very, very into them. Can you hear me? Go so ahead. I think, yes, go yes, ahead. So, so from the tweet, um, I clearly was trying to depict the only two choices the president can have. One, either a second term or first developmental, uh, a, a developmental uh, vision for the country, and with this particular list, I don't need. To, I don't think I clearly need to state which was picked before. And you know, the question I've asked everybody is why is why presidents in Nigeria think the first thing to do is to secure a second term while throwing away a first term. wrap things up. Uh, finally, um, we all know, you know, where the country is right now and um, the situation of things. You've mentioned, of course, the subsidy renew re removal issue and um, we're dealing with several other things. And now there's obviously uh, a Niger problem. Well, thankfully, I don't know if I should say thankfully, the president is now the head of ECOWAS and he has, as ECOWAS, given a seven-day ultimatum to Niger and the Junta who's taken over. What does this mean for you and for us, Nigeria, especially where we are right now? Well, it's a dangerous trend. Very, very dangerous trend. Because when you are a chairman of uh, an organization, your decision will affect directly to your immediate family. If you take that decision, don't forget that Sokoto, Kevi, Bornu, Zamfara, they are close to Nigeria. Any action taken will mean a lot of influx of refugees to Nigerians. And of course, you know, I always tell people, it's easy to talk about war, but the consequences nobody can predict. You know, when you're talking about going and giving person seven days, what about your home front? That's what I always tell. Your home front is burning. In the north central, northeast, northwest, southeast, there's nowhere that is safe in this country. The money, whatever you are going to take in going to another country to fight, why don't you look inwards? Because as at now, Nigeria is at war with Israel. You cannot pretend that everything is okay. You can only give what you have. What are mm -hmm. you going to fight in another country where your own country is in turmoil? Nigerians are going through here, security-wise. You are talking about the, the presidential uh, speech. He talked about agriculture. You know, spend all, almost uh, 100 billion in it. Where are the farmers? Who is going to farm? In the north central, north uh, west, people don't go to farm. In fact, it is even adduced that in certain countries in the north, the terrorists have taken over the affairs in that place. They pay taxes, mm -hmm. they pay the people before you go to you know, their, their farms. Why don't we look at our own? Yes, whatever is happening in Nigeria is internal situation. It doesn't concern us. Of course, if you look at all the indices, the Nigerians, that they are supporting whoever they want to support. And they are coming mm -hmm. out in mass to support. Are you going to be the one who is coming outside? It's like me. I have a boy. Are you the one that's going to fill the boy for me? I'm the one who is filling the boy, the pains. So why are you coming mm. to tell me what I should do in order to point the pole? You know, so this is the okay. issue. Nigeria should look towards and see how we can sort our own problems first. Well, I want to say thank you, gentlemen. Uh, well, I don't know if I have to say fortunately or unfortunately, but there's a lot that lies ahead of Mr. President and the country. Uh, a lot that's supposed to happen. Uh, all of that remains to be seen. We'll keep our fingers crossed and, again, hope for the best. Kunle Lawal is Executive Director of uh, the Electoral College Nigeria, and Sadi Madaka is a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne. A pleasure. Thank you. All right, we'll take a quick Thank break. You. Now, when we return, we'll look at, of course, the seven-day ultimatum that ECOWAS has given to the Niger Junta. It's still plus politics. We'll be right back. <laughs> 